Hello, I'm Dr. Timothy O'Donnell, and I welcome you to Rome, the Eternal City, as we continue on our Lenten pilgrimage, in which you are visiting the different Lenten stational churches here in the city of Rome. Today on our Roman pilgrimage, we go to the church of Santa Prasede. According to a very ancient tradition, Santa Prasede was the daughter of Senator Pudens. This noble Roman senator greeted St. Peter upon his arrival to the Eternal City, greeted him, received the faith at his hands. His daughter was also received into the faith. She is one of the first martyrs and should be considered a most courageous witness to the faith. According to an ancient and venerable tradition, a number of Christians during the Neronian persecution were killed directly in front of her. This church has been venerated by Christians down through the centuries, particularly recalling her heroic witness to the faith. Despite the fact that she came from a wealthy, noble family, she embraced Christianity and embraced the crucified Savior with all her heart. As we enter into this holy week, let us think about her courageous witness and how we also must bear witness in our own lives to our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us go now to the church of Santa Prasede. This church is a hidden gem, another one of the most ancient of the Roman churches and one of my favorites. It is near St. Mary Major. It is best to approach this church from the Via San Martino. As one enters from this angle, one literally steps back into the Middle Ages as countless pilgrims have done through the centuries. Many of the columns found within this church were taken from nearby pagan temples. It has a beautiful cosmetesque pavement and mosaics dating back to the ninth century. A prayerful atmosphere pervades this holy site, which still, after 11 centuries, continues as a very active parish, filled with praying faithful. It is one of the most ancient, being one of the 25 original titular parishes of the city of Rome, the ancient Titulus Praxedes. According to a very ancient tradition, this church was built above the house where St. Prasede, who was the daughter to Senator Quintus Cornelius Pudens and a sister of St. Pudenciana, had greeted St. Peter. It is said in this actual spot, she had actually given refuge to persecuted Christians. We are told that 23 Christians were actually discovered in this very house and were horribly martyred in her presence. We are told that after their martyrdom, she collected their blood with great devotion by taking a sponge and then placed the sponge and the remains in a well where she herself afterwards was buried for some time. A beautiful porphyry disc in the floor of this church marks the exact spot where, in the ancient home, this well existed. We are given a description of her in the ancient martyrology. Some she hid in her house, some she exhorted to profess the faith courageously, others she buried. To all who languished in prison, she brought whatever they needed. When she no longer could witness the cruel oppression of the Christians, she besought the Lord, if it were his will, to take her from this valley of tribulation. This was granted on July 21st. God summoned her to receive a heavenly reward in return for her love of neighbor and holiness of life. The two sisters, St. Prasede and Pudenciana, now lie underneath the high altar in sarcophagi in the crypt. Excavations under this church have revealed a Roman house. As we go up the flight of steps, one is led into a beautiful atrium with ancient columns still embedded into the wall. The church itself is divided into three naves with 16 ancient granite columns to support the treviation. The mosaic in the apse and on the arches are for the most part the work of Pope Paschal, whose monogram can be seen at the center of the further arch. The apse mosaic is very similar to the one we witnessed at St. Cecilia's in Trastevere as it was executed at the same time. 
Christ appears coming upon the clouds of heaven. And above his head, one can see the hand of the heavenly Father bestowing upon him his benediction and the crown of victory. To his right and left, he is flanked by Saints Peter and Paul, with their arms affectionately around the shoulders of the sisters Prasede and Pudenciana. The saint off to the right is probably the martyr Zeno, who is also venerated in this church. He has a little chapel known as the Chapel of St. Zeno, just off to the right. It is one of the great gems of 9th century mosaic work. The lovely columns which flank the entryway to this little chapel are all made of different marbles. To the left we have a granite column, and to the right one of a rare black porphyry. Above is a shimmering mosaic of Christ surrounded by angels. Just off St. Zeno's Chapel is a sanctuary where is venerated the Pillar of the Scourging. This column, it is believed by pious tradition, was the column to which our Lord was fashioned when he was cruelly scourged. It was brought back by the Crusaders from the Holy Land in the year 1223. The marvel is certainly of a rare vintage, and down through the centuries, countless faithful have venerated this and stopped to remember prayerfully the passion of the Lord. Here in this holy spot, which has so many marks to venerate the early martyrs of the Christian church, so many great witnesses who shed their blood for Jesus Christ, let us recall here the great praise of the martyrs that was ushered by the great Saint Cyprian. O feet blessedly bound, which are loosed not by the smith, but by the Lord. O feet blessedly bound, which are guided to paradise in the way of salvation. O feet bound for the present time in the world, that they may be always free with the Lord. O feet lingering for a while among the fetters and crossbars, but to run quickly to Christ on a glorious road. Let cruelty, envious or malignant, hold you here in its bonds and chains as long as it will. From this earth and from these sufferings, you shall speedily come to the kingdom of heaven. The body is not cherished in the mines with couch and cushions, but it is cherished with the refreshment and solace of Christ. The frame, wearied with labors, lies prostrate on the ground, but it is no disgrace to lie down with Christ. Your limbs, unbathed and foul and disfigured with filth, but within they are spiritually cleansed, though the flesh is defiled. There the bread is scarce, but man liveth not by bread alone, but by the word of God. Shivering, you want clothing, but he who puts on Christ is abundantly clothed and adorned forever.